Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at a tool called Nebula Generator that was created by Mark Kingsnorth and is available to buy on the Blender market. This tool has actually been around for a while, but there's been an update to it that lets you create beautiful nebulas in three dimensions, making use of Eevee's powerful real-time volumetric system. As you might remember if you've been following this channel over the past few months, a collection of us in the community have been trying to push the limits of real-time volumetrics in Blender to see what kinds of nebulas we can come up with. The update to this tool takes a lot of these recent developments and packages them into a nicely presented tool that's easy for everyone to use. So what we're going to do is take a look at how it works. When you open the file, you'll see this layout. Immediately, we can see a text-based guide giving an overview of the system and a commented node graph to control the nebula generation. In the 3D view, there is a single cube and some light sources. If we go into the EV rendered mode, we can immediately see the nebula start to appear. The generation is very fast, although the quality and performance will rely on your render settings. If you want to increase the quality of the nebula, then you need to reduce the tile size in the volumetric section of the render settings. I recommend always working with a higher tile size when modifying the nodes, just to keep the performance stable and prevent any crashes. The actual nebula nodes are well organized and split into different sections. Nebula density and nebula colors are the main sections we want to focus on for customizing the look and feel. The effect of each node is thoroughly explained by the surrounding text, so you always know what you're adjusting. In the nebula density section, there are areas to change the shape and density of the nebula. You can play around with the generated noise texture nodes to manipulate the outcome of the volumetric structure. And then if you want to change the color, you can do this in the cloud and gas color regions of the nodes. You can do it by either manually adjusting the color of the handles individually, or by easily shifting the hue value in the hue saturation nodes. This simple setup makes it very quick and easy to start building your own volumetric nebulas. If there are any other generated textures that you would want to use to construct the shape of the nebula, then you could use them in place of these default noise textures. You could get very experimental with this area, since all of the generated data is used to construct the density and color data afterwards. If you wanted to, you could construct some very abstract and geometric shapes in isolation in these areas of the nodes, and the rest of the graph will turn it into a beautiful volumetric result afterwards. If we go over to the right side of the nodes, by changing the factor value in the mixed shader node, you can adjust the balance between the main nebula structure and the surrounding gas, meaning that you can make it as atmospheric as you like. As you can quite clearly see, the generator also creates a field of stars that you can also customize the properties of. The stars themselves are generated from a particle system that is attached to the nebula boundary cube. Clicking the invisible small star object in the outliner will let you see the star material set up in the shader editor window. It's quite ingenious and very simple. Using the color ramp you can assign a range of colors, and the system will pick a random color from this gradient and assign it to each of the stars individually. It may be difficult to see on the video, but the generator also sets up a field of stars that sits on the world background. If we go to the world section of the nodes, we can see another graph that's been set up for this. If I go to the background node on the right and increase the strength value, you will be able to make this effect more pronounced. Again, if we briefly take a look at these nodes, you are given control over the shape and coloring of the entire effect. Balancing the influence of the three-dimensional and background star fields with the volumetric data will let you create some really stunning results. If you watched my last video on the subject of real-time nebulas, you might remember me talking about some of the graphical issues that everyone was bumping into while trying to get smooth camera animations flying through the scene. These have not been completely resolved yet and Mark has made note of this in the guide, as we can see in the following sentence. There can also be strobing artifacts while animating with Eevee, which can be countered with higher sample settings, but so far it has not been eradicated completely. If I continuously rotate my camera, you can see the source of the issue, which is where the nebula visuals are created as a series of separate cards, from which further detail is interpolated and blended together. This is something that's just worth keeping in mind. If you are careful with the settings, then you can get some really nice looking animations, but you will encounter some graphical anomalies while doing this. It's not the fault of the generator, rather a symptom of the design of the volumetric system. I'm sure that if there's a simple fix, then the file will be updated appropriately. Now let's talk about the value. There is nothing in this file that you wouldn't be able to set up yourself, but it's nice just to have a well-crafted file already made for whenever you feel like making these kinds of volumetric artworks. So is it worth the $15 price tag? Well, it might be a little bit high for not actually adding any bespoke functionality for Blender, but it's also worth remembering that you actually get two generators with the package, one for 2D and one for 3D nebulas. As we've seen, the content is very well documented, so I guess whether or not you think the price tag is right will also depend on how valuable you think high quality presentation and documentation is. Personally, I love good presentation because it really helps to get you inspired and thinking about all the possibilities of things you can make. So if given the choice, I would always pay extra just to get something that's laid out as well as this. Also, as we've seen, emphasis has been placed on artistic control, so rather than overwhelm the user with loads of disconnected nodes, there are very specific places where large visual changes can be made to the structure with minimal effort. This is symptomatic of good design. 
Of course, I'm also biased towards enjoying anything science fiction, especially Nebula related, as many of you will know from my previous experiments and community collaborations. But I know there are lots of people out there who will also be interested in this kind of tool, because the community response to all of that work was very encouraging and quite unexpected. So I think that will wrap it up for this video. I know I don't usually do reviews on this channel, but I wanted to fit this in quickly before I fly off to the Blender conference in Amsterdam. Speaking of nebulas and the conference, Gleb Alexandrov will actually be doing a speech about 3D nebulae and the power of the Blender community at 11am on the 25th of October, and I'm sure that it will make its way onto YouTube, so keep an eye out for it. If you're going to the conference, make sure to say hi. I will only be there on the 24th, and I will look something like this, so just keep an eye out for the logo. So that's where we're going to wrap it up. Make sure to follow me on the social media channels to keep up to date with the videos, or join our Discord server to get previews of upcoming content. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.